What is up everybody? Thank you for tuning in to another episode. This one's gonna be a little bit different. Uh, you know, I just spent the day up there hanging out with my man Peter up there at Delta Marine and Outfitters in Daphne. And uh, yeah, we got to uh, we got to break into a brand new new canoe pursuit, kind of go over how we're gonna set it up and everything. And, and yeah, it was just a good day, but I'm not gonna hammer on too much about that because we go into pretty good in depth in the end of the, or throughout the whole video, I should say. Uh, but <clears throat> you will notice it gets a little choppy kind of towards the end. That one's on me, my camera died. I thought I had it charged all the way, but uh, obviously I had left it on at one point and drained a lot of the battery. But it just switches over to the GoPro, nothing too serious. Uh, it does kind of kind of play with that kind of last scene, but it still turned out pretty good. It was a good day up there, had a lot of fun, had a lot of, uh, you know, just hanging out with uh, with Peter, getting to talk new canoe, getting to talk fishing and everything, and it was just nice to be up in the shop. But if you guys are interested in, you know, any kind of, Getting a brand new new canoe. Uh, I think he's actually got a few vibes up there still. If you're wanting a vibe for whatever reason, I would definitely go with the new canoe. Uh, but you can check him out. He's also got the custom Ginus, which are a sick boat. If I had, uh, you know, if I didn't have all these kayaks, all this boat right here, and everything else, I'd probably have one of those custom Ginus. But it's a very cool shop. He's got. Like I said, he's got kayaks, he's got ginus, he's got tons of fly fishing stuff. If you guys are into fly fishing, uh, he has got everything you could ever need for fly fishing. And he's even carrying some some nice sunglasses. These are the, the Bahio, the Baggios. So you've got a little bit of everything up there. He's uh, looking to expand his shop, maybe add some, some conventional gear and everything too. So y'all be sure to check him out. Check out his YouTube channel, Lost Angler. And uh, be sure to check out his shop. It's a cool little shop. Good place to hang out. He does lots of events and everything. Uh, you know, it's been to a few of them. We've actually got a demo day coming up this Saturday the 28th. So that's actually two days from now. It'll be tomorrow from the time you see this video. But it's up there at the Five Rivers Resource Center up there in the, the Mobile Tinsall Delta, kind of along the causeway and everything. It's going to be a good time. going to have just be hanging out. Going to have all types of new canoes to check out. We're actually going to have the new canoe in this video there if you want to get out and test that out. I'll have mine up there. Uh, we'll have a few other, we'll have an unlimited, we'll have a flint, we'll have a little bit of everything you can test out. So if you guys have been, been interested in checking out a new canoe, wanting to test it out, see it on the water, this is a perfect time. So y'all be sure to uh, kind of keep that in mind. But also, if you guys are interested in a guided kayak fishing trip, surf fishing trip, boat fishing trip, any kind of fishing trip along the Alabama Gulf Coast, anywhere that saltwater touches Alabama, be sure to shoot me an email at kayaking.kennedy at gmail.com. Actually running a little bit of a deal on my, uh, on my kayak fishing trips till the end of the month so um be sure to shoot me that email i'll give you all the details and everything and, and we can get out there but i'm gonna quit hammering on we're gonna go ahead and jump straight into the video hey guys it's peter jordan delta marine and outfitters and lost angler fly shop and today is a special guest i've got captain scott kennedy what's up everybody thank you for tuning in we got a we got a good one here for you we're about to put this one together and see what we can do with it the boat we've got right here guys is the new canoe pursuit and this one's brand new just came off the truck it's all in the wrapper and we're going to unbox it so kind of an unboxing day but we're going to add the pivot drive we're going to add all the things that from our experience of spending time in the pursuit the things we feel like are must-haves yep and i tell you there's a lot of different directions you can go with it especially it's kind of got a few different takes on it today you know you got peter here the fly fisherman he uh, certainly has a whole different skill set of stuff that he does and what he needs on the kayak, me being mainly conventional, um, you know, having customers on the kayaks and everything like that. I'm sure I've got a few different things too, but that'll be fun for y'all to see today. Just kind of see what works for all different types of fishing and uh, yeah, how you can set this boat up to, to please you the best. All right, now, Scott, um, you're a full-time guy, right? Yep, 365, that's uh, what I do now. I um, So I definitely have plenty of time on the water, plenty of time in these new canoes I've been fishing out of mine for a few months now and it has certainly gotten plenty of use to say the least. Now what, what new canoe do you use? So I'm actually in this exact kayak. This is the new canoe Pursuit and um, and I tell you it's I was uh, I was in a different kayak for the longest time and I just was kind of set on my ways but I made the switch to this and day one being in the shallow water spending there you know the areas I, I frequent a lot uh, there's no way I could go back at this point so New Canoe Pursuit, that's what we're out rigging today. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great kayak, fast, paddles real well, which is huge. Um, I had been so long without having a kayak that I could actually paddle and, you know, use it like a true kayak. And it's uh, it's been definitely been a big bonus. A lot of, lot of good things about it that I really enjoy. We were talking earlier about you, when you've got customers, 
uh, and you were in uh, a different brand of kayak, um, and they used the uh, the flipper style drive, right? Which oh, is, yeah. Which is great. And there's some ups and downs to each drive, but uh, we were talking about when you would have those days with really low tide that you'd end up having to do repairs at the end of the day, whole nine yards. And I said, well, how are you liking the pivot drive of folks? And a lovely boy told me, well, so it was a yeah, like you, like you said, it was. It seemed like every time I would go out on a low water day, that was I could pretty much count on my afternoon being repairing kayak parts. Um, and it's even you know just being as careful as I could, you know, telling everybody, hey, we got a sandbar coming, hey, watch out for the stump, this, that, and the other. Um, if you're not familiar with with a pedal drive on the kayak, it is real easy to to mess mess up the pedal drive on the kayak. With the new canoe, however, you've got that pivot drive on the back. Um, it kicks itself up, and now I can, you know, I can have somebody that's never been in a kayak, and they can just cruise across it and just, just, you know, smoke the sandbars if they want to, just whatever, because it'll kick up once we get past where we're going, drops right back down in, and uh, I, I am really liking that because one of my biggest things about a prop drive and why I was so against prop drives for the longest time was all the other brands that have the prop drive right up front, you have a very set depth that you can run that in, so it's like foot and a half or more anything under that you have to pull that drive up you have a big bulky drive just taking up your whole front space and then you're having to paddle and most kayaks nowadays you know the big thing in the kayak fishing world is wider and more stable which equates to just being terrible paddling so not having to worry about any of that being able to just keep going you know anybody can get into it anybody can can go not have to worry about you know like I said bending stuff breaking chains it is huge. It's going to save me quite a bit of money in the long run, and I am uh, definitely, definitely liking that. Yeah, totally. So you do, you do spend more money if you do buy the pivot drive than, uh, than the competition, but you get more. Uh, and you know, I think we've all learned over the years that you, you know, if, if you, if you, to, to buy quality, it costs money, and, that, and that, that's all there is to it. So let's get to unboxing this thing. I'm going to go ahead and grab out ye old razor knife, and uh, let's get on. So this is the Tundra, which I don't know if you guys know this, Tundra is my absolute favorite color in the new canoe lineup. I think it's gorgeous. That is slick. So definitely um, slick. Definitely slick. So when you when you get your new canoe, uh, you're gonna get the fusion seat, which is definitely the most comfortable seat on the market. Uh, if it's not, then I haven't sat in one more comfortable. How about that? Uh, it, now, all your other, so the two models that are not gonna come with the 360 seat are the Pursuit and the um, and the flint we're going to set these up this boat today up with the pivot drive and i personally really like a locking 360 and i like the risers because i feel like it puts my hips in the right position to get the most out of that pedal drive what's been your observation definitely that the uh, without the seat risers uh you would almost kind of be like a like a recumbent bike or something you know your feet are up in the air which isn't terrible for everybody you know some people like that i know it's, it's great for exercise and everything uh, me being on the water, especially those longer days where I'm pedaling eight to ten miles, uh, you know, every bit of comfort is key. So being able to, you know, like just like Peter said, get up, get your hips kind of lined up, have those pedals, you know, below your chest, kind of a, a little bit of a, a uh, further down angle, definitely will keep you on the water longer, allow you to pedal a lot further. And um, the 360 seat, like you said, is is amazing. You know, you have that locking 360, so you you have the choice. You can be just you know a traditional seat where you're only facing one direction. But um, for me, like where I've noticed it a lot is sheephead fishing. Yeah. So I can tie up to these piles. In certain spots I sheephead fish, you know, you tie up to one pile, and, and not being able to pivot, you're kind of focused on one set of pilings. But with that 360 seat, you can get set up fish the pylon that you would normally fish right in front of you, and then still swivel around and hit all the ones behind you. Uh, me being a guide as well, uh, you know, it's never my go-to, but I do bring a lot of live bait sometimes. You know, I get some customers that, that that's just what they like. They like live bait. So, if, you know, I have my bucket of shrimp or whatever in the back. I just pivot around and I can scoop it out real easy. I don't have to really try to climb over like a crazy man or anything. So it really helps out with that sense too. And if you're going to choose between, and this is any of them on pivot drive, it's my opinion, this is my opinion, uh, so take it with a grain of salt, but um, <laughs> take it with a grain of salt. 
Uh, if you're going to do the pivot drive, which I think is the best pedal drive on the market, um, what you want to do is make sure if you have a boat like an Unlimited or a Frontier, both these boats do extremely well with the pivot drive, make sure you swap out that 360 to a locking 360 because when you're pedaling, you want your base, like where your butt is, to sit still so that your feet are able to move. So that's my big suggestion. If you're going to go do a pivot drive, switch it, switch it out to a locking 360 so you can still have the advantage of being able to turn to get stuff in the back. But when you're pedaling, you're sitting rock solid. And that's going to also make it easier to cover a lot of water in a day and make the whole situation a lot less fatiguing. Yeah, and I tell you, that's um, being on a kayak as much as I have, I, I can tell you from experience. Every little, little thing, every little bit of fatigue you feel, yeah. it adds up quick. So. Being able to uh, to mitigate that problem is definitely big in the long run. Yeah, and if you're fishing the Mobile Bay area, and by Mobile Bay I mean Eastern Shore, all that kind of stuff, and if you're fishing around Fort Morgan or you're fishing anywhere we fish at, the ability to cover water is essential. Um, and we have a lot of folks come into the shop and they're like, well, I'm a shorebound angler, I'm going to be surf cast, I'm going to be doing that, where should I go? I've only got three or four places to send people. Now, when somebody brings a kayak, I'm like, oh, no problem. Here's 50, 11 places to go down here. So if you're in this area, if you're on the northern Gulf Coast in general, I would say, uh, having a kayak opens up amazing amounts of what you can do and having that mobility to do that. So uh, to get that, you now this boat paddles extremely well. So you don't have to jump right into a pivot drive on a pursuit to be happy. It will paddle like a dream. Uh, but um, we're going to go ahead and add the uh, the pivot drive to it. So we're gonna get this, we're gonna get all this plastic out of here and we're gonna grab it, we're gonna unbox the pivot drive. If you wanna see an in-depth video on how to do the pivot drive, I've did that already, it's on the YouTube on Lost Angler. Um, and uh, it'll be a link in the video on how to do a long, you know, install the pivot drive. It's not hard at all, it's easy. If I can do it, anybody can. Yeah, yeah, very easy, it took me all of five minutes to yeah. get it on there and it's water ready at that point so right totally definitely uh that is one thing i, I you know kind of i guess talking about the pivot drive and the new canoe as whole is um everything is fairly simple to, to attach do whatever you want to do it's got gear tracks all over it yeah. and uh that, that that's huge that's definitely huge i really love how just new canoe in general is just open platform for whatever you want uh when we get in just a second um when we get this plastic out of here before we start doing the drive, let's turn it to its side like so everybody can see really well. We'll move camera angle so you guys can see. And we'll lay it on its side. If you've looked at the, there hasn't been any changes from 2022 to 2023, but if you're still trying to figure out which of the new canoe boats is right for you or which kayak's right for you, we're gonna kind of go through the features and how we use them in the boat. And, uh, cause like Scott mentioned earlier, I'm a flying boat. I don't need live bait. Um, uh, he has other considerations than I do, uh, which is great. Um, uh, so, whereas I'm looking to have zero clutter on my boat because anything that can catch fly line will catch fly line. That's all there is to it. So, we're going to turn it over, take a look at it. I got out of my boat, he got out of his boat, but it's two different styles of guiding. And we use the same boat, but we use it differently. And hopefully, like uh, Scott said earlier, this is going to kind of open up a little consideration of how you might use your boat. All right, guys. So we're going to blow through this really fast. Uh, first off, the color on this tongue is gorgeous. Um, so in the back of the boat, you've got your handle here. You've got a good, solid T-handle that's going to mount in. Uh, this crane area back here is for a large cooler. It holds a 45-quart Yeti. Uh, case in point, 45-quart Yeti. Uh, Arctic in this case because I'm broke. Um, it can even, I, my cooler is a 50 and it fits yeah, in there. Not, not, it's an old igloo, but it still fits in there. Yeah, um, and you, you've got some room in there. And then you'd mount your seat in here. You've got two cup holders, one on each side. And this is the new top mounting rail. Um, now, you, I don't do a whole lot of accessories again because I'm worried about stuff catching them and falling. How have you enjoyed these top mounts? Uh, so it's perfect. You can put in like, uh, for me, you know, I don't use it all the time, but I do when I go offshore, if I'm fishing a new area, fishing some deeper water, uh, especially this time of year when the water temperature's all over the place, uh, it's a good place to mount your depth finder. You know, you can have the ability to put it on there, not have to drill any holes in your kayak, uh, you know, be able to take it on and off. Cause like I said, I, I don't necessarily use mine all the time. You know, some of the places that I've been fishing for years, I don't really feel the need for a depth finder and it just honestly kind of gets in the way. So. 
take that out, you can mount your depth finder to it, you can mount the switchblade for, you know, for your transducer off of it. Um, you know, you put, if you want just like a little rod holder, like for me, I know a lot of the times when I'm going from spot to spot, one thing I like to do is troll. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things, it's zero extra effort, but it helps you catch some fish sometimes. So you can put you a, you know, a nice rod holder on there so you don't have to sit there and hold the rod. You can kind of be hands free, looking at your phone, eating a sandwich, doing whatever, have your rod there. Helps you not drop the rod in the water quite as much either because um, one thing I am guilty of at least once a year, and when I say at least, it's a very little at least, I drop a rod in the water. And um, having that, you know, having the ability to just be able to put a rod holder on there and not have to worry about that, that's, that's definitely nice too. But it's, um, you know, a lot of people like to go all out on all sorts of different things when they're, you know, fishing inshore and everything, especially like the bass fishing guys. They, if they can put it on their kayak, they will. And this offers... And there's nothing wrong with that at all. I mean, that fits their style of fishing. Exactly. And they know what they need. And so they're going to have different... Especially those, the, the tournament anglers, like fishing like the KBF now and how this becoming a pretty big thing, you know, it's putting all those extra electronics, like I got a buddy of mine, he runs two nine inch displays on his, um, which I mean for him, I mean it, it literally earns him money. So I mean it, it gives you that ability to be able to put whatever the heck you want and again not have to drill into it because I've, I've done it plenty myself, uh, but I always, you know, when you, when you go to pull out that drill and drill in the kite, it kind of, kind of gives you a little squirmy. So, Having these up top to where you only have to drill certain holes, you don't have to drill a hole for every single attachment is, is very, very nice. I like the fact that since it's top loading now, if I want to put that attachment on, I don't have to pull everything off to put it in there. Let's say I've got an attachment up this part of the rail or whatever, and I want to put another attachment in, I just drop it in. That's so much better than have taken everything off, so that's really nice. Um, coming here, I, I stand up a lot when I fly fish, like if I'm, let's say Scott and I go to a flat, uh, say we get the chance to go, go to the causeway before we open the shop or something. Um, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to use that, uh, the kayak paddle, like a stand up paddle board paddle. And that's a great thing about this boat too, it does, you can treat it like a paddle board if you want to. Uh, but having this, this sea decking, this marine mat material in here, it takes a lot of fatigue off during the day. It makes stand up in this boat a whole lot easier. And it does not get near as hot in the summertime as a dark plastic, I can tell you that. That's, That's true. Uh, that foam does not like to warm up quite as much. <laughs> yeah, and I also like the fact that you have a crate up forward too. I mean, I never would have thought about that until till we got till I got a pursuit. But this is super useful, man. Like I still have the pivot drive right here, but this still leaves like this much space to put things in. And you're like, yeah, I didn't even know you, I needed these things. But once I've gotten used to it, it's really nice. Yeah, that's where my tackle boxes live nowadays. My fly bag lives up there too. Yep, so it's thing. nice not having to, you know, shove it under your seat or something. You yeah. know, being able to have it right up front, right out in the open where you can see what you got and everything is, is, is very nice. Yeah, and then you have your storage up here. What I love about this one is it's on a tension hinge. So wherever you stop, it stops. That's really nice too. And if you ever, uh, and, and that's, that's super nice because when you're working on it, you know, it doesn't come down on you. Like you open it up, it stays open. Uh, my tray comes in and out. Uh, these rod tubes, they're tubed all the way up. I don't know if you can see the tubes from here, but they're tubed all the way up. I can put a nine foot fly rod in each side. I actually put two because they did the oversized tubes. Uh, Scott hunts out of his. Uh, have you, now, I understand they did the larger tubes to hold shotgun barrels. Have you tried that with these yet? I haven't tried it yet, but you definitely got, got the wheels turning now, especially that's, uh, that's my plan for the morning is to get out and do some do some hunting early and then follow it up with a little bit of fishing. That'll be a very good place to uh, kind of stow away my gun while I'm trying to do some fishing. So my man's doing the casting blast. I love it. Oh, yeah. All right, right on. So we got this done. Kind of went through the inside. You got a few little things we'll talk about later. Let's go ahead and slap that pivot drive in. Yep. All right, guys. So what we're going to do now is we've got the pivot drive in, went through, and went in super easy. Like I said, you guys can do this easily at home. Scott and his at home. Yep. It went super well. Um, so, and again, we've got the video, we're going to refer you to that video. So you saw us pull everything out, and then you'll go to the video, watch how to do it in depth. No point in spending 30 minutes with that. Now, what we're going to do is, we talked about the height that we like to do. So what we're going to be pulling is, uh, so can you grab those boxes for the kit? This is the Locking 360 kit, if you order from Custom Unit, not Custom Unit, New Canoe, sorry guys, do a lot of game videos. Uh, it's going to be uh, number three. 311 and then the uh, seat riser kit 
Uh, it's a soft pack kit and it's going to be the Fusion Seat Height Kit. And the number for that is 3320. And you guys hear little voices in the back. I've got my special helpers here today, my two youngest kids. Thank you. All right, cool. So we're going to start out. All right, so when you guys are doing this, you want to make sure that this guy gets turned and fitted. The easiest way that I've found to do that is to go ahead and take some of our hardware. And what we're going to do with it is we're just going to slip it into the side of this guy right here. So the first trick is we want to take this and it needs to rotate about a quarter of the way. And the best way I've seen to do that is to take these shorter uh, screws, I mean bolts, and we're going to take it and we're just going to slide these in. We only have to put in two at a time because if we don't, we won't have that ability. Now we've gone ahead and put uh, mounted the seat base in the track. And now I'm going to take this and slide it on over. Boom. And now you've turned it about a quarter of the way and we can get everything set. So to start out, we're going to put the bottom of the base in real fast. And we're going to put the top. Now if you're looking as far as a uh, to do your mounting, uh, this is going to be a 7 uh, uh screw where you can use 11 millimeter. There's usually a crossover in your, um, in your two components. All right, so like I said, we're doing two of the seat riser kits and all this stuff comes with the hardware you need. And Scott and I actually met because of a mutual customer. Yeah, good old Dan. So Dan, if you're watching, this is your fault. Shout out to you, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> this is your fault, dude. This is your fault. All right, cool beans. Yeah. Now, here. Oh, so gear track. So there are some things I don't like about my pursuit, and it's okay. You're not gonna like everything about it. One thing I don't like is paddle storage. It's kind of an issue for me. Certainly. And also, a place to put a drink. So I don't know about you. I like taking a big Yeti tumbler or a big Nalgene. Yeah, something to uh, just like we were talking about earlier today, trying to keep plastic out. Yeah. Plastic usage down as, as little as possible. You know, it's definitely good for the fish, good for everybody, and uh, it'll keep your drink a lot cooler too if you use it. You know, That's right. yeah, or something like that. Don't have to worry about keeping it in the cooler all day. Right. Okay. So on the pursuit, if you look at the Yak Tag, this is the Yak Gear. This is their 14 inch bar. Uh, it comes with stuff so you can throw bolt. We don't have that ability here without putting a uh, plate. So now we can put it on different parts of the boat. But for where we're at, the answer is no, we won't have the space. What I want, personally, I want to be able to get to where uh, my paddle can be out of the way when I'm actually paddling. Um, and my cup holder is not in the way either. And the cool thing about this 14 inch track is I've got a lot of room to make that happen. Um, and we're gonna do, I guess I'm committed to the orange. I'm committed to the orange. So I guess I have to do some, I have to go buy some orange paracord to accent this off my <laughs> Okay, cool. All right, so since we've got that, uh, we're gonna rummage through real quick, uh, grab some cool stuff. I'm gonna show you what to do, how to prep this surface, and how to glue it down real fast. We're not gonna glue it, we're also going to use a mechanical bond. We're gonna use self tapping All right, cool, so. All right guys, first step we wanna do is we wanna prep the surface area we're gonna work with. And we're using 91% isopropyl alcohol. Uh, don't use the lower concentrations. Uh, you want to definitely use the high high concentration so that we're making sure we're making sure that the spot we're going to go to is going to be good to go. What you want to take into consideration with this is where you're going to put everything uh, in the future. And I like the isopropyl alcohol because it sets really fast and we're going to go here. So first thing we're going to do is we want to have a mechanical bond. So for this we're going to use uh, six by half stainless steel screws, okay? But the big thing that's gonna hold it in position more than anything else is gonna be 5200 marina heat. What we wanna do is, guys, we're gonna remember with 5200, a little goes a long way. And once 5200 cures, it takes about 24 hours to cure. Once it cures, it's never coming off. So make sure it's exactly where you wanna put it. <laughs> Has been your experience with 5200? Yeah, I got a lot of it in my garage, unfortunately, because, uh, I probably use a lot more than a pro should. <laughs> there's, no, there's no wrong amount of 52 okay? Alright, cool.
All right, cool. So what I like about this is we talked about that drink holder situation. Uh, we carry these here at the store. I'm not gonna bother to undo all of it. Uh, I've got one somewhere hiding around here. Now I've got my handy dandy drink holder so I can put a full size Nalgene bottle right here. And um, we got the Yak Attack double header. This is super nice. Would you just grab just a random paddle up there real quick? Certainly. Thank you, sir. And we're gonna take this guy, we're gonna drop it down. A little bit more out of that. Now we're gonna take this and that's gonna lay down. Boom. Like it was made for it. And that makes it so nice. Now I've got room for everything. I've still got a place to slide in my fly rods. Uh, and the thing that I use most often for my fly rods is that fly reel dock. You wanna hand me that guy right there? Beautiful. So guys, this fly reel dock is gonna come in. It's gonna sit right here on this spot. And we're golden. Good to go, man. Good to go. Now what would you add to this boat yourself? So if I was gonna add anything else, you know, of course the, the anchor trolley, uh, myself, I don't use it a ton personally, but for my customers, it's great, especially the people that we, uh, you know, fishing live bait and everything. Just throw that anchor trolley on there, that way you can throw out an anchor, not really have to worry about doing anything. Um, I do enjoy using it too for when I'm sheep head fishing. It gives you just a quick little point to co uh, connect into and, um, you know, really be able to move around and, and hit those uh, pile and drill well. Uh, past that though, this canoe, or this kayak, the new canoe, you don't really need to add a ton. I'm kind of, you know, I'm, I am a conventional fisherman myself, but I'm kind of like Peter. I don't really add a ton of extra stuff. You know, everything I, I need, I've already got on here. Um, you know, it's got places, plenty of rod storage. I do put my cooler in the back. That way I can have some drinks, put some fish in there if I decide to keep a couple. And I've got some extra rod holders on there too, so I got plenty of storage. But I tell you, the pursuit as it comes, it's very well set up. You know, of course you can add all this stuff on there. It definitely makes things a lot nicer. But one of the great things about it too is it's it's ready to go. Once you get the drive and the seat on, I mean, it's it's got everything you need. So you don't really have to add a lot, but at the same time, you have plenty of gear tracks, plenty of space, plenty of places just like Peter just showed us where we put a you know a gear track on the side. Got a lot of space that you can really do, do whatever you want to. And that's um, always been kind of the beauty of kayak fishing to me is it, it's very basic, you know, you can, you can make it as basic or as you know it's extreme if you want to so it's um you know it is it is uh that's, that's great about kayak fishing you get a lot of uh everybody's kind of customized their own kayak a little bit different everybody's got their own thing what works for them and this is a great platform to do everything on that like that real fast one thing uh you guys if you're down here in the area this saturday on the 28th we're going to be at five rivers uh we're going to be at the bartram uh kayak launch and you can come out here and paddle this exact kayak uh, you can take a look and pedal it too. We're gonna have to pedal. Obviously, the paper drive is already on there. You can try out this boat for yourself, see if it's the right boat for you, and um, just kind of go from there. So, guys, we'll see you on the water. Remember, you have a supporting logo. Thank you.